Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. I hope you're doing well. Um, just a few further thoughts on the whole Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury debacle. Um, some of us knew that it was a debacle, a no-go, a no, non-starter, if you like, from the word go. Um, but Eddie Hearn has said some very interesting things. Uh, and I don't think it changes my opinion on the fact that Fury was essentially sort of clout chasing and gaslighting. But um, as someone who has no inside information, no sort of, I'm not privy to anything that goes on with these guys. I don't know any of them. Uh, nevertheless, it is interesting to hear Hearn's comments. And here is my theory, which may be entirely inaccurate about what has happened with this whole farce. Um, like I said in previous videos, I, you know, Fury talks such an unfathomable amount of crap that you just, um, you, you're actually a fool if you pay the remotest attention to him. I suppose if you listen to him, you can sift through it all and you get an insight into his psyche and maybe you can find one or two sort of nuggets of truth um amidst all the sort of blather but uh i never pay attention to what he says you know wake me up when he's when he's in the ring i like watching him fight i think he's a great fighter but out of the ring he talks like a shit um but then you have a situation where aj um apparently according to hearn just got so fed up with this constant gaslighting and all these demands you know oh, the fight's off you know if you don't sign by monday it's off if you don't sign by wednesday it's off and meanwhile behind the scenes hearn was dealing with um george warren who apparently got on very well with and negotiations were going well and so on and i just think um probably when you can when you again i don't know this for sure but this is just my theory but look at joshua where he is at the moment he's had two back-to-back -back defeats against you know a terrific fight i mean a great fighter who's going to the hall of fame um, a smaller guy who, not that much smaller actually in terms of real weight, but a guy who he was expected to be able to impose his size and his power and his strength on. And he couldn't do it for whatever reason, mentally or physically or just in terms of talent and technique. But probably, you know, we saw the meltdown in the ring, which was very, very embarrassing. You know, I think a lot, most of us agree that that was not the thing Joshua should have done. It was, yeah, it was embarrassing and did steal a bit of sex thunder, you know, his there he, he just won two fights in a row you know what's going on in ukraine you know that Usyk was fighting as a symbol of his people and that was his moment and joshua kind of stole it off him it was poor poor form by joshua to put it mildly um so i i think all of this stress which is so draining mentally draining um probably indicates that actually joshua there is an element of relief that the fight's not happening Although having said that, I could be wrong. Maybe Joshua did see the the Fury fight as a way back. Or, although maybe he wanted to see it as a way back. But then when the dust settled, he thought, do you know what? Do, do I need this? So he kind of blew it off. I think it's fair to say that um, there's a very realistic chance that, that Joshua is kind of glad that the Fury thing, to go into another major, major fight, huge fight, with all that added pressure on top of what he's already felt and is feeling, he probably thought, oh, fuck this. I can't be arsed with this anymore. <laughs> um, and of course, that's, I still believe that's what Fury wanted. I still believe that he sort of, it was a case of, of clout chasing Joshua's name. Joshua's still a massive name in Britain in order to be able to say, well, Joshua didn't want it, so oh, sorry, but I've got to fight Manuel Char. You know, that is the bit that still rankles with me heavily. Because do not tell me for a split second, for a nanosecond, that if you you feel you are genuinely the best fighter, best heavyweight, not just in your era, but ever, which of course is a load of crap, um, that Manuel Char is your chosen opponent. That, you know, this is garbage. This is absolute garbage. And don't give me any crap about, well, you know, Jared Anderson and, uh, I don't know, who, who else can we pick? Uh, Philip Hergovich or even Zili Zhang. You know, no, 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 I can't fight. I can't fight them. I mean, they're, they're sort of second tier guys. They're not elite guys, but I can't fight them because their names aren't big enough. What a man will charge is, you know, this is garbage. This is absolute garbage. And everything I said about Fury and what comes out of his mouth, I absolutely stand by. I don't know. I, I don't really understand why anyone would, would disagree, but... Some people are fanboys. Uh, well, what can we do with them? We ignore them. But but in terms of Joshua, I think this, there is a sense of relief, you know, that, oh, let's get, just forget it, forget it. All this 
social media crap, sign this contract by this time, I'm in charge, look at me, I'm the big I am. Joshua probably thought, I've had enough, 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 enough. And now is this a duck? Is he ducking Fury? I don't think so. I think if he, well, you could argue that he's ducking him right at this moment. I can understand why people would say that. They would interpret it that way. Um, but I think, I've got to be honest with you, if I was in his position and Fury had been behaving the way he is and knowing how volatile and erratic and contradictory he is, I, I, I've got to be honest, I would probably say, I can't be bothered with this anymore. I've really had enough. Um, and the proof of the pudding will be in the eating further down the line. Because let's say Joshua does come back with a couple of wins against, you know, those sort of B, B plus fighters. And Fury still wants to fight. And I think he's, I think all this retirement stuff's a load of crap. I think he'll, he wants to fight because the ring is probably where he feels safest and it gives him his identity. And regardless of what he says about money and fame not mattering, it absolutely matters to him 100%. He, that gives him an identity. That, for, for someone who is you know, mentally brittle, shall we say, I don't mean in terms of, I don't mean in terms of you know, not being strong mentally. In a boxer ring, he most certainly is. Out of the ring, he is brittle. Because we've seen it before. And I don't mean that as an insult. You know, lots of people have mental health issues. Don't get me wrong. It is not an insult. So, you know, you acknowledge a weakness and then you deal with it. It's not an insult. It's not. It, when I say weakness, I mean, I, it's like if you break a leg, you can't be expected to run 100 metres. <laughs> you know, you've got to wait for the leg to, to fix. And it may not fix perfectly. Or you may have a physical condition that you need to take, you know, medication for to you know, it's, it's a weakness, quote unquote, but it doesn't mean make you a bad person. It doesn't mean that you, you're lacking in courage. Um, it's a, perhaps vulnerability is a better word than weakness. And I think Fury mentally and emotionally certainly is a vulnerable person outside the ring. The ring gives him structure and meaning and, and identity. Um, but further down the line, if he's still fighting, and I think he will be, then I think you can make a decision about Joshua. Because if he's come back with a couple of wins and he's, you know, gelled with his with the new trainer, with Garcia or whoever it is he's going to have, you know, then I think that definitely if he ducks him, then you can say well, this is a definite duck. At the moment, I, I think ducks, so to say he's, I don't think either of them are, I don't think either of them are really ducking each other. I don't think either really wants to fight right, right now. I think Fury, again, used, he gaslit and, you know, He's, he's gaslighting his manipulation is to use AJ's name. At the same time, I don't think AJ's, I think he's quite relieved that the, that the fight isn't going to happen. But I think further down the line, I think they do at some point want the fight, just maybe not now. I think further down the line, we may still see it. But um, yeah, interesting interviews from, Hearn's given a few interviews. Um, and in fairness, during the IFL one, because Coogan Cassius has got a lot of often deserved flack for being... Hearn's mate and not asking him the awkward questions. He did actually chase the point, which I thought was good. And Hearn, you know, I mean, when I use the word obscurantist for Hearn, it, it doesn't even come close to what Fury's like. Fury is, is a master gaslighter. He, that's his his shtick. That's, and he is quite good at it. Um, be interested to see how his marriage goes. Although maybe Paris, she seems like a formidable lady. Maybe she keeps him in line. I don't know. But, but yeah. What do you think? What are your opinions on this? Um, yeah, those, those are just mine. Again, I have no insight. I have no, I'm not privy to anything that goes on there, but, you know, just my theory. I'm putting it out there. Tell me if you think I'm talking nonsense. Do it the polite way, please. I'm trying to be polite to you. You be polite to me. Uh, otherwise, I don't, I'll have to get rid of you. I'll have to block you. I don't like blocking people. I'd rather have a chat, a civilised adult chat with people. But give me your opinions. If you disagree, you disagree. If you agree, you agree. Um, and yeah, like the channel. Hit the subscribe button. Keep punching people. Oh, don't forget the like button as well. Anything that helps out the channel. Much love to you. We'll speak again soon. Bye-bye for now.